when you walked out and um, Lee Greenwood was singing, Gosh, I've known you for 20 plus years, a long time, and I looked at you and there was an emotional moment where, like, I think people around me were starting to tear up. Were you close to tearing up at that moment? Well, if I admitted that, I think I'd lose a lot of votes. I'm not. Su- I'm not. Su- I'm not supposed to. Do you. Do you want a president that cries? I don't think so. So I'll say absolutely not. The ride to the hospital from here. Take us in the car. Well, it was a lot of blood, and when uh, I was down. Uh, and bullets were flying over my head, uh, I noticed tremendous amounts of blood. But I felt it's very, uh, you know, they talk about surreal. It wasn't surreal. I had total understanding of where I was. And the Secret Service people were very brave because they were, I got down, I think people were shouting maybe or whatever, but I got down pretty fast. I was always impressed with that. I got down fast. (laughs) If I didn't get down that fast, that would have been a second miracle. But they were flying right over my head. And you could hear them. I didn't know you could hear bullets. You can hear they're whizzing by at 4,000 miles an hour or something. But I I think that uh, more than anything else, they wanted me to go out by stretcher. And I didn't like that. I had a lot of people watching. I don't want that. But also, and and, and I thought they did a great job. Because the president has to look. Well, I don't want to go out. I, I, I felt that I was hit in the ear. And it felt like the top of the ear. It grazed my ear. But it was really bloody. And the Secret Service people, and, and rightfully, thought I was hit on three or four places because there's so much blood. Because the ear bleeds, or whatever, they say cartilage. The doctor at Butler said cartilage. And they say because of cartilage. The ear bleeds more than any other part of the body. There was blood all over the place. And I really thought that only was hit in the ear. So they said, sir, you were hit in other locations. And they're going all over my body. They probably realize what a body this guy had. But they're going all over. And they didn't find, I said, look, I'm not going on a stretch, and I'm, get me up. I wanted my shoes, because, no, they, they hit the me, shoes? they hit what me, no, it? no, when they went down, they hit me so hard that for some reason, I think they were going at a different angle, both shoes were off. Are you wearing those shoes today? It's Same different, shoes? but it's sort of similar, but it's sort of a little different. I have it, those shoes are loaded up with lots of blood, I'm not, uh, I'm not looking to wear them again. But, you know, uh... They got me to the car. I thought they did a very good job. Some people say slow. I don't think slow. They got me to the car, and I think I might have been holding them back. You know, my first instinct was to finish my speech. It's crazy, isn't it? Isn't that a crazy instinct? That's I got, you. I'm pouring. But, my, but they didn't live. That's, that's where they put their foot down. Uh, they got me to the car. I got in. I did a little talking, not much. Uh, two very, very good people. Uh, Sean is, is fantastic, but two very, very good people. And they got me to the hospital. It was so professional. Everything was... Look, they had a bad moment with the building. A bad moment. How long did it take in the car? About uh, seven, eight minutes. Very quick. And the hospital was great. And I didn't realize this. I never knew they did. When a president goes to an area, they close a hospital in its entirety. It's ready for exactly this. I didn't know they did that, but they did. So the hospital, I got there. The doctors were outside. The nurses. And no people. They literally close it and... Almost like they expect this. No, it's a, it's a genius thing, but you would never do. Who would ever think that? And I was so impressed. They got me in, and they took care of it. A Butler Hospital did a fantastic job. The doctors were amazing, and also amazing on the other two gentlemen that were hurt very badly. They thought they weren't going to live, and they ended up living, and, and I think they'll be very healthy David again. James, so. They were very, very uh, good people, good Trump supporters, and we took good care of them. I mean, they, they took... A, Two hard shots. They were not supposed to make it, and not only did they make it, they really came out. I think they're going to be 100%. But uh, Corey didn't make it, Mm. and I felt we had an obligation to Corey to come back here and help him out. We raised a lot of money through different things, but we raised a lot of money for the family, and they deserve it for what they've gone through. They really... They really uh, had a great father and mm. great husband. And when you saw them for the first time today, again, yeah. since, since that horrific day, um, what was that like? Well, it was amazing. The daughter's beautiful, two young, young girls, and a beautiful mother. Mm. And they're at the bottom of the plane. I get off, and they're the first people I greeted and met. And I knew them from before, of course, from, mm. the, you know, from the tragic event. But, uh, you know, they're having a hard time, actually. They're having a very hard time. It was so uh, so crazy. The whole thing was just a crazy time. And we had to sort of come back and uh, complete the circle. 
And that's what we did. Even the way I started, I sort of said, like, uh, here we are. Let's go. What was the first thing Milana, Milana well, she was, said to you? She was watching it on television. She was uh, watching it. I think she paused it for a couple of minutes, and somebody called, and she was ran to the television. Uh, she's, she's great. Look, she, she had a bigger problem. She had a problem with how does Baron take it? You know, Baron was playing tennis with his friends, and somebody walked over and ran over and said, your father's been shot. He's been shot, Baron. And Baron really likes his father a lot. And so does Eric, Don, Tiffany, Ivanka, the whole group. But, uh, you know, I've been a good father to, to the kids. How is he doing in college? He's doing great. He's always a great student. Baron's a very good student. He's a tall student also, by the way. <laughs> Pretty tall student. But he's a, he's a great boy. And he came in, Mom, 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 what happened? So, uh, and then they saw me get up. And then they saw the fist bump. You know, it's very interesting. When I got up, people thought, Maybe he's dead because, you know, they lifted and they're very strong guys. They can get you up fast. But I said, I'm not going to go anywhere. And I, I convinced them I thought I was only hit in the air. It's very interesting. But they got me up and I watched and it was dead silent, even though I was standing up and in vision because people didn't know I was alive or not. And then when I did the fist pump, everybody realized and they're screaming, USA, USA. It was the craziest day. It was a crazy time. A lot of people here tonight, uh, people who are sitting near me in the crowd tonight, were wondering why our priorities seem to be elsewhere. Not that other people don't need help, but very concerned about that. So we're into almost $300 billion for Ukraine, and yet they're offering people $750. For immediate needs. For the worst, yeah. yeah, but for the worst hurricane that anybody's seen. But more importantly than that is they don't have the people. They're not doing it. It's a bad, it's a very bad thing. This How is would you Katrina. do it differently? I'd have a tremendous team of people here. They don't have any people here. The people are all, I was in North Carolina yesterday. I was in Georgia. And Georgia's different. You have a good governor. He's doing a very good job. But North Carolina is a disaster. And it was also hit very hard. Mm. But they don't have the people. And they're complaining there's no people around to help. That was a horrific storm, much worse. And, you know, it's late in the season. You wouldn't think a thing like that could happen. But uh, you have to get the people out. And they have to be out uh, much more. I was there for the entire day, and I saw virtually nobody other than the people who were badly affected. And one man, he's got a house that's gone, and he's sitting on a rock. He's sitting on a rock. Uh, what's gone on there, you have to help him. And you have to help him monetarily also. And it's only, you know, if you look, it's Virginia, it's Alabama, it's, uh, it's you know, it's South Carolina was hit very hard. I spoke to their great governor there and they were hit very hard. Biden Florida, said, Florida was hit very hard. Biden said the response has been robust and well coordinated, Mr. President. Yeah, well, nobody, <laughs> nobody says that. He doesn't know. Well, that's what, what President He doesn't Biden know said. what robust is. He doesn't. <laughs> Look, he should be there, and she should be there. She shouldn't be at fundraisers. She's at, at fundraisers. And her teleprompter went off, and she she didn't do well with the teleprompter off. That's happened to that. me a few times. Yeah, by but the you, way. yeah, but you yeah. will get through it. It happens to me a lot. When the teleprompter goes off, you have to be able to do it. She didn't get through it. Uh, but she shouldn't be there anyway. She should be, I would say, North Carolina is, bad, is so bad. And she she was there today there. for three hours, I believe, uh, Kamala Harris. Um, but the Democrats accused you of politicizing the storm, even though you got to the storm-ravaged area first. But that you were politicizing the yeah. storm um, and that that was unfair. You know, anything I do, they'll say, oh, it's political. If I do anything good, no matter what I do, they'll say, oh, he it did it for politics. I mean, they could have gotten there way before me. The 40,000 people in North Carolina who have um, requested absentee ballots, only a thousand of those have been returned. This is in the, the hurricane uh, ravaged area of North Carolina. I think Politico just did a piece about this yesterday. How will you and the Republican Party ensure that all voters in hurricane hit areas have their votes counted? Because this could be a close yeah, election. Yeah. Those votes could matter. And all these mainstream publications are saying this now. Uh, Republican areas got hit very hard. You know that it got hit very, very hard. I believe and many people are dead. You know, many people are dead. They don't even know what it's going to be in terms of the number. You know, they have hundreds are missing. Uh, and I can't really speak to it. I can only say that I believe they're going to go out and vote if they have to crawl to a voting booth. And that's what's happening. Uh, Laura's working on it. Other people are working on it. 
and we're trying to make it convenient for them to but but they just lost their house mm. we're, we're trying to make it convenient for them to w go out and vote but we are doing very well in certain areas that we weren't expected to do virginia we're doing well we're doing well all over i think we're going to do great in north carolina because the response has been so bad to the hurricane they have this response has been Horrific. But didn't it's, Elon praise been, Pete Buttigieg saying he cleared the way for some of my only, helicopters yeah, yeah, to come in? Only, he, he, he praised Buttigieg. Well, that was two days late yeah. because what happened is he sent his uh, great, you know, gadgets in. He has the one most, uh, the Starlinks. It's, a, it's incredible for communication. But they were asking me, the people of North Carolina and representatives, they said, could you possibly speak to Elon Musk and get it? And Elon came through and then they sent it in and they... They wouldn't allow it to go in. It took two days. And then Boot Edge Edge, as you say, Boot Edge Edge, uh, called. And I guess uh, after two days late, though. And were they shamed, are you saying, into Of course they were. It, it was huge publicity that they wouldn't allow. He had helicopters bringing stuff in that's not even gettable. You can't even get it. I mean, honestly, Elon did an amazing job because I called him and I told him the situation. They were trying to get it, but you can't, you know, it's very hard to get. I called him, and he had, he had things being delivered literally by the time I got off the phone. I'm even wondering. About it. it was so quick. But then they got there, and they said they're going to confiscate it. They're going to keep it. FEMA said they're going to keep it. They wouldn't terminate it. Then the publicity got crazy, and then yeah. all of a sudden they released it. What is Joe Biden, I believe, on Friday said that he believes the election will be fair and f transparent, but he's not sure it's going to be peaceful. It, and he walked into the White House briefing room to, to, to say that and, and other things. What do you think he was getting at? I don't he think was he referencing knows. some of your rhetoric. And I, I don't think he knows. I really don't. I think he has no idea what he said. I really don't. I think he's uh, maybe referencing it. You know, it could be him. Uh, but uh, I don't think he really knows. Look, they took, they had a coup. They took it away from him. He's an angry person right now because they took it away. They shouldn't have done that. I'm no fan of his, but they should not have taken it away. They took his 14 million votes. And they gave it to somebody who they didn't want. They didn't want her because she was last on the list. Who would have been? I mean, do you think? Well, I don't want to say because I'm not looking part? to build up somebody. But they had about 12 people, and she was the 13th, and 12 were better, all 12. But do you think they made a mis I mean, do you think they made a political mistake? Well, I'll tell this? you on November 6th. I can't tell you. I mean, she's not doing very well right now. We're going up, and you see that. We're leading in most of the polls and all. But we were up uh, by 21 points. We were really beating. We had the debate with Biden, and after that, we, we had this, I think, insurmountable lead. Then I had to do it all over again. Think of this. You're like in a fighter. You're a fighter. And they come out, and the fighter's getting beaten badly, and they say, well, take that fighter out. We'll give you a new fighter now. That's what happened to me. This can only happen to me. But, Kamala, but we're doing well now. The lawfare that continues to be waged against you, it's almost every time, you know, you're, you're up in the polls, something else comes down. On a personal level, how do you deal with that? Just processing it, it superseding indictment, another uh, memo yeah. comes out, From another, deranged former, aide, lunatic, this another guy former aide says this or that. So how do you as a personal, on a personal level deal with it? Well, what's happened is it's been totally discredited. The biggest case was in Florida. We won the case in its entirety. We're leading in most of the other cases, and a couple of them are just really bad judges that are, you know, Democrat judges, Democrat areas. But I have many cases. It's all what they did is they said, let's go after this guy and let's cost him a lot of money, but more importantly, a lot of time and a lot of thought. How will you restore faith in our justice system? A lot of people will say, well, he's just going to do to them what he, they did to him well, and get back people, at them. Yeah, and, yeah. And they're, a and a lot of people say that's what should happen. Well, you want to know the but, truth. But, right. <laughs> well, but I, think, I mean, but I think, you know, you know, punitively using government institutions is what got us in this mess in the first place. And, and my, our town hall that we did back in February, one of the lines that really resonated, I think, with people is when you said, my revenge is going to be my success. Yeah, well, I do believe that. But I will say this. They have started a terrible precedent. We've never had this. We do have that in third world countries, banana republics, a lot in South America where they go after somebody politically that's an opponent. We never had it to any great extent, really almost at all. But you're not going to do that. When you get in office, you're going to look at all your political enemies. No, I want to make this the most successful country in the world. That's what I want to do. And so for all the women out there who you know, maybe don't like this tweet or this joke or this nickname, 
Tonight, what do you say to them about the safety of our homeland? I say to the women, and I think I do very well with the women, actually. I think it's a lot of fake polling. I think I do very well because I say I will keep you safe. I'm not, al not going to allow prisoners to come out from Venezuela and many other countries all over the world, the Congo, uh, the Middle East. They come out from the Congo in tremendous numbers. They're coming out of the Middle East, Yemen, and lots of countries that aren't particularly friendly to us. I'm going to keep you safe. I'm not going to let people hurt you. I'm going to have a very strong... They were bugged by that, the protector line. Like some of the... Well, you know, people went crazy about that. He that. said he's going to be my protector. Yeah, that's that that's looking down on us. So that's no, patronizing. I'm looking up at them. I am going to protect. I'm going to protect men, too. It's my job to protect as president. They don't protect right now when they let 13,099 criminals. I mean, murderers. These are people in prison, some getting ready for the death penalty, and they allowed them to come into our country. When I get them out and when I say it's not happening and when I close the borders so that bad people, you know, we want people in our country, but they have to be people that are capable of loving our country and that are good people. They have to go past tests. So I say to people, and I'm very, I'm not ashamed of that. I saw a couple of wise guys on the left say, oh, who is he? I want to protect women. I'm going to protect women, and I'm going to protect men, and I'm going to protect children. And that's my obligation to do it with the military and with law enforcement. A hundred years from now, we'll probably all not be here. How do you want to be remembered? I think somebody that really worked hard and turned a country around that's going bad. This country's going bad. We're not going to have a country, or certainly we're not going to have a country like this. So more than anything else, I think I want to have somebody say for a long time from now and in a short time from now, he was able to make America great again. Scale of 1 to 10 this rally, what was it? This was something really special. Well, this was love. This was pure love. Uh, I think it was maybe on a scale of 1 to 10, it was a 12. I knew it was.